Hey there, Castaway Crew. Hello. Welcome back to the channel. A journey like no other. Today, boy, have we got a special treat just for you. We would like to invite you on a very immersive exploration, a journey that transcends the boundaries of the virtual and the real. Get ready to step into the heart of our dream, a dream that has been meticulously crafted using state-of-the-art technology, modern ingenuity, and a touch of that architectural magic. But guys, this isn't just any tour, it's a virtual voyage through the soul of our future dream home. Picture this, a breathtaking panorama unfolding before your very eyes. Every detail of our sanctuary brought to life in stunning realism. And how is this possible, you ask? Well, that's where the magic begins. So this is going to be an in-depth video of how we designed our dream space using programs, software such as Microsoft Flight Simulator, believe it or not, rendering software such as Twinmotion and Lumion, and of course, the ultimate rendering architectural software and 3D modeling, AutoCAD Revit. So today, guys, we are going all out just for you. We're going to be showing you exactly how we designed our dream home, from the orientation to the elevations, the mapping, the solar outputs, and we are leaving nothing on the table. So picture this, soaring through the skies, experiencing the grandeur of our future heaven from a bird's eye view. Thanks to the marvels of the latest Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, we're taking you on a ride through the virtual clouds, providing a very unique perspective on how this particular tool actually influenced the very layout and footprint for our dream house. So today guys, it's about sharing our knowledge that can help to empower you on your own journey to creating that perfect dream home. See, we believe in transparency and we're pulling back the curtain to reveal some of the innovative tools and ideas that we used in creating our dream space. And why spill the beans? Well, because we're all about helping you achieve your dreams and turn them into a reality. So whether you're planning a home in the Philippines or anywhere else for that matter, we've got the tips and tricks that could be a game changer. But we're not stopping there, guys. In the future, mine and Jan's hope is to develop and offer an online service at a fraction of the cost of traditional professional prices that offer floor plans and blueprinting, design elements, and just general architectural expertise. So if that is something that you would be interested in, please let us know in the comments below and let us know if you like some of our designs, which we'll be posting in this very video just for your eye candy. So guys, what are we waiting for? Let's fasten those seatbelts as we take to the skies, or perhaps just sit back and relax with your favorite brew as we embark on this extraordinary virtual journey. Thank you. 
So this house sits on an 852 square meter lot in Dolores, boasting three very spacious bedrooms and two baths. A perfect home for small families, retirees, or anybody for that fact, chasing the off-grid lifestyle without sacrificing any luxuries or comforts. And let me tell you, this house doesn't just embrace the outdoor lifestyle, it practically gives it a bear hug. Just imagine a sprawling swimming pool and plenty of outdoor entertaining areas, it really creates an amazing vibe. And when it comes to sustainability, this house sports a 10 kilowatt solar system, 36,000 liters of water storage, which are under the lanai. It is all filtered through multi-stage micron filtering and a separate UV dedicated light filter. So we're talking about off the grid living with all of today's modern comforts. Stepping up to this house is like entering a realm where modern elegance meets nature's grandeur. The sleek architectural lines and its contemporary design seamlessly blend with the landscape that surrounds it. A striking play of textures and materials from the clean lines of the exterior to the expanse of glass panels create a visual symphony that demands attention. The entrance adorned with carefully manicured greenery and minimalist accents sets the tone for the modern masterpiece that awaits inside. This house isn't just a dwelling. It's a statement, an artful composition of modern living harmonizing with the beauty of its natural setting, making a lasting impression from the very first glance. Imagine waking up in the master bedroom to panoramic views as far as the eye can see. And that's the magic of this house design. The primary living spaces along with the master bedroom, the kitchen, the lounge and the dining, of course with the rooftop deck and the undercover deck, all give you breathtaking views of the expansive surroundings that abound. These breathtaking vistas really turn this house into a symphony of visual delight. This house features an optimal design for solar generation, positioned to perfection for solar generation. This house is basically a self-sustaining powerhouse. The result, virtually no running costs whatsoever. See, if you're going to live in paradise, why not live there with the least amount of stress possible? So, when it comes to blending luxury, efficiency and unparalleled views this house truly sets a new standard. So we've got a screen capture happening as we speak. So guys, this is exactly what we're going to do. First, I'll show you Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, I'll talk a little bit about its capabilities and how it can be used to, uh, well, one, to fly around and have a bit of fun and enjoy the scenery, but also how it can actually be physically used to plan a site uh, as a building survey. Um, so what we'll do, we'll just jump in a plane, we'll head down to Ormoc Airport, and um, we'll take off and do a little bit of a fly around Ormoc City. So this is by no means a tutorial, but if that's something you're interested in, then please leave your comments in the comment section below, and um, I'll do my best to oblige. So, all right, set as departure. I've got my plane, fuel, weight, that's all good. Let's get our headset on. All right, let's go ahead. So what I'll try to do, I'll actually do a bit of a circle around the block, then I'll actually try to land the plane on, that, on the property or near to, and then I might give you, let's say, a comparison between the Google Earth satellite imagery versus how it looks inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So for any of you who don't know, Flight Simulator works off of something called photogrammetry. So photogrammetry data is basically satellite imagery of the entire planet, just like Google Earth, and then AI generated uh, bushes, buildings and foliage. So in terms of its accuracy when it comes to locations, like the roads, where the building sites are, even where every tree and shrub and bush could potentially be, it's within a meter, like it's dead accurate. I've verified this in many locations that I'm familiar with in real life, and I'm telling you, honestly, you could not tell them apart from real life. That's enough droning on from me. Let's, this puppy started up, let's forget about ATC, and let's just fly on into the sky illegally. Fly, fly, no, that's all right. Gives for an authentic vlog. <laughs> That's the way, Bella. Take it away. Take it away, darling. Alrighties. Parking brake disengaged. Thrusters maximum. Let's go. Let's see if I can keep this thing straight with the rudder pedals. So I'm actually using 
proper rudder pedals here. I've got the Thrust Masters, the Pendulum Effect rudder pedals. So it's a bit windy here at the moment. But oh, oh, I'm struggling to keep it straight here. All right, we've got takeoff speed, rotate, and we have liftoff. Beautiful. Try to pitch the wheel up a little bit. Not to go too fast, our flaps are down. Let's retract our landing gear here. I'll give you an outside view. Landing gear has just gone in. And then we'll retract our flaps fully. Pitch the nose up a little bit. Let's go back in the cockpit. Climbing at 1500, all right. I'm gonna bank left. Let's go to the external view again. And there you have it guys. We're in the air. You can see the fields from a bird's eye view. And out in the distance we have Ormox City. Let's try and level this bird out a little bit. Continue to climb. There's the airport, the runway that we just left. And out to the side there. You probably can't see it, it's sort of in the left third of the screen. We've got the solar farm, which is very close to where our block of land is. So, literally just a stone's throw away. So what I'll do, I'm gonna aim for that. Let's go back to our cockpit view. Let's reduce the engine, engine thrust a little. I'll pitch my nose down. Sorry, I've got an itchy nose. Don't, don't look at me. Reduce that engine thrust a little bit more. Pitch the nose down. And there's a the solar farm, guys. You can see that blue. So, as you know, it's got the solar farm. Even though it's two-dimensional, it's flat. There's no 3D data for it as of yet. Microsoft Flight Simulator hasn't added it in. But if you look on Google Earth, you'll see that solar farm right there. And it's the same size, the same shape. It's all to scale. It's, it's life-size. So, you can really get an idea for dimensions and and you know, like I was talking about the elevation data, the terrain, the height mapping, it's all, it's all pretty spot on. So even though if it's not exact, you can really, you can get a very good picture and you can honestly do all of your drawings and your drafting according to this. It'll, it'll be close with, with minimal adjustments. So let's extend our flaps now. Let's get our landing gear out. Back to the cockpit view. I think I'm coming in pretty hot. But we'll see. All right, my landing gear's out. Extend the flaps again. Try to really bring that speed down now. I'm aiming for the trees that are sort of just a little bit ahead of me. As long as I can clear these, I'll be able to touch this bird down. Please don't crash. All right. Reduce thrust. Bang, touchdown. Well, I don't think you There we go. Brakes on. Are there you we go. Are sure you landing in the place where your house is going to be built? Absolutely. So if you notice these trees that I'm coming up to right now on the right hand side, I'll show you these in real life. They're actually there. They're actually there. So. Well, I heard you talking about these trees. Let's are continue all on. try to turn it around. If you guys can sort of notice this dirt road here that I'm about to go on. So there's this dirt road right here. Doesn't appear much like a dirt road. But we're basically on the road that takes us to the main highway and then down towards Ormoc. And if I just do a full 360 turn around here. Or There's basically a dirt patch around here somewhere, and if we hold there, this is basically where our block of land is, roughly, very close to. I believe there's a dirt patch there on the screen. That's where our next door neighbor's house is. Then you've got the trees on the right. I'll put arrows to all of this anyway in the video, and our block of land is literally sort of next to those trees. 
So as you can see, you've got the mountains out in the distance. You can see a little bit of the ocean or the bay there on the top middle of the screen. And you've got the house on the left here with the orange roof. I'm pretty sure that's Adam and Jane's house. Or maybe it's the one with the brown roof sort of further on the right. But, um, oh, park brake, I'm rolling. But yeah, this is, <laughs> this is basically the exact area, the exact spot where our house is gonna be built. That's literally how we got a gauge or a feel for how it would work. So I landed the plane here and I just pictured, well, where's the sun? The sun's setting in the west. So it's sort of right above us there. And that's why our house roof is pitched sort of flat and in the opposite direction. So we catch the morning and the midday sun, and then as it starts to set and the solar output gets a little bit weaker, it gets pretty dark pretty early in Ormoc. So yeah, we pitch the roof in the opposite direction and you can sort of get an idea for how things are gonna look for how they're gonna feel. So guys, if there's anything else that you wanna know, like I said, drop your questions in the comments section and I'll, I'll be more than happy to answer them. So now let's jump over to Autodesk's Revit. Let's try again. Guys, I probably spoke for about 16 minutes straight and I didn't record a damn thing of it. So guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to launch the first software that I want to show you, which is Autodesk uh, Revit 2020. That's the version that I'm using at the moment. I got it as a student version, which by the way is free. So I'm going to be putting links in the description of this video so you can all go and check that out and it just makes it far more accessible to you. So. Revit, I think they're up to 2024 now, um, but this program is so powerful, I haven't even gone into all of the features of it and I wouldn't even know how to use probably 80% of it, but I fumbled my way through, I learnt the basics, and it got us to, well, as you can see in the virtual tour, that's what I was able to create, <laughs> not even knowing 80% of the features of the software and how powerful it can actually be. So, student version, completely free, and all the tools are at your disposal. So if you're a student, I definitely recommend going and checking it out. And again, this is not gonna be a full tutorial on how to use this software, just merely a quick insight into how we managed to ascertain the way we wanted the house, how we wanted it designed, how we wanted it to look. Um, and then this gets transposed into the rendering software, which is Twinmotion, and we'll get into that shortly. So here it is, guys, all in 3D. Um, this automatically transcribes your floor plan, so your 2D model, into the 3D model. You have these levels, which you can create at any height, as many as you want, uh, ground level, roof level, terrain lower. As I've got it called, I've got the floor, floor level, which I have 300 millimeters above the site. As you can see, the inclination of the land here has a mild slope, as I mentioned in the video before when we were flying the, uh, flying the little cruiser around Ormoc. Um, so this was basically derived from Google Earth. You can get your measurement tool and then you can put it at one point of the land to another point and it'll give you basically the height difference and you just do your subtraction, you get your elevation out of that. This was about two and a half meters or so, which gives you that. Um, so you've got a full topography feature where you can actually do topography. So you can put different points on different measurements and then it'll give you all the slopes and the contours of the land, which is absolutely crazy. But for this purpose, I needed it reasonably flat. There wasn't much variation. I just needed to know the top and the bottom so I could level off the house and make the steps, as you can see here, the different levels of the, of the property. Um, so floor level. Um, this is my floor plan. I took off all the dimensions uh, just so it doesn't look so, so busy so you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. But basically, this is the pedestrian access gate here, the driveway with the grass strips, the carport here on the left where my mouse is, and then we've got the entrance here with the door. Um, so you've got a variety of options in the architectural section up the top here in the tab. Let's just say we click on wall. I've got my basic six inch concrete hollow block wall, my CHB, and then I can just place this wherever I like. Click on the wall, I can give it a dimension, let's just say 5400, it'll give me that. This is already locked to, sorry, this is unconstrained to any levels, so I've got an unconnected height of 2.1. As soon as I say um, constrained to floor level, yeah, okay, that's, that's, I'm not interested in that. 
forget that warning. Let's say now I go to my 3D drawing. Where's my wall? There it is. And you'll see that it's constrained. All right, so pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, actually, I'm not sure what I constrained it to. Oh, sorry. Constrained to roof level. There you go. Constrained to roof level. And it pops up. So you can draw these in. You've also got pre-done windows, doors. You can download additional things for this. And voila, there you go. A house gets built pretty quickly. Um, you can also do free range modeling. So that's just using different shapes and uh, voids. So just basically creating forms in 3D and cutting them into all different kinds of complex objects. And, and if I get too far into it, there's, it's just crazy what you can do with this. Um, but again, that's on the complex side, which I haven't dived into too much. And for the purpose of building a house, you don't really need that unless you're doing really complex mechanics, car parts or, or I don't know, robotics or whatever. So, yeah, it's, <laughs> it goes pretty deep. And then, as far as that's concerned, I mean, you can do other cool stuff, like you can do, you know, camera angles, so you can get perspectives on things like that. You know, you place a camera down, and then you can sort of get an idea at a different elevation. You also have your north, south, east, west elevations. You know, if we go east elevation, that'll just fix that position so you can't do any 3d stuff but it'll give you that two-dimensional side view from the east elevation so you can model what you need to model here and um, I guess most importantly how do we make it look so good in twin motion well all you need is to download the Datasmith plugin from Autodesk's website which integrates into twin motion so all you do is hit synchronize which I won't do now but you hit synchronize and you open up twin motion any changes that you make to your 3D model, so if I place that wall earlier, that will automatically populate inside of Twin Motion, and then you can go nuts applying your materials and your textures and your paints, colors, whatever you want to do. Um, so for the purpose of this video, we won't go through that because I don't want to accidentally mess up my drawing. It took me a lot of time to do. So let's pop over to Twin Motion now. No, I don't want to save changes. We'll open the community edition as you saw the watermarks on the video for that I did in, the, in that virtual thingy majiggy. Um, so let's load him up and then I'll talk a little bit about Twin Motion and the, <laughs> the features that it's got. Again, Twin Motion is free, link in the description below. Um, if you get the community edition, there is a paid version which unlocks more features, allows you to use it commercially, which is probably the biggest thing that you're paying for, and it also allows you to export in higher resolution, so your videos can go up to 8K, I believe it is now, um, and then all your image files and your renderings that you take, you can export them at a much higher resolution. Anyway, so what we'll do is open up my file. Oh, did it stop? Oh no, thanks. See, look at that. My assistant reminded me that my background's gone. <laughs> Thanks, darling. <laughs> Let's play that again. Yeah, that's better. All right. Here we go. We got that in the background there. Yeah, great. Cool. <laughs> High five. Yeah, nice. <laughs> because Uncle Daniel's hopeless at YouTubing, so even a kid knows better than me. I can't believe I didn't notice that. Anyway. Where's the elevator music? And guys, just so you know as well, when it comes to the um, hardware to run these sort of programs, um, I'm going to do a follow-up video about this as well and show you what we use and then let you know the mistakes that we made and the things, the parts, the components that you need for your PC to actually make it work properly. Now, when I built my computer, it was only intended for gaming. I never thought I'd do any video editing or any kind of uh, architectural rendering. Turns out if I paid $30 extra for the processor, I would have gotten the integrated graphics card, which would have allowed me to edit videos a lot faster. I also got the wrong dedicated graphics card, which doesn't cope very well with twin motion and architectural rendering software. Buy NVIDIA. If for any of you who know what I'm talking about, buy NVIDIA. It'll save you a world of hurt and a world of bugs. And I'm gonna show you exactly what my PC is and what I recommend you build if you wanna get a good all-rounder. I'm gonna be doing a build soon and I'll probably video that as well. Don't have the money for it right now, but hopefully sometime next year when new components start coming out, I'm gonna refresh the system. 
back to the video. So this is the final shot that I ended that virtual tour in. So let's speed up our camera. Let's drop down. Down, down, and down. And talk it, whoop, almost went through the ground. And talk a little bit about twin motion. I'll slow it down. So here, this is basically where your 3D model inside of Revit, your, I guess your building software, can get transposed into a software like this your visualization program, whether that be Lumion, which I've used as well, really good, and Twin Motion. This one probably has a slightly higher rendering quality, better lighting systems, all that sort of stuff. This is where you apply your materials and your textures. So, for example, here on the screen, you've got materials. So you've got your glass, and this is already part of the library. This isn't any third-party products or any external stuff. This is all in built in Twin Motion. So if you download it, this is what you can expect. So you open your glass, you've got mirror, you've got clear glass, you've got this pattern glass here. Uh, what else have we got? Our square blackout glass, and you can also adjust parameters of these materials like colors and all that sort of thing. Uh, we've got materials, we've got our concrete, which I've applied to my polished concrete there. So you've got bare concrete, you've got exposed aggregate concrete. Um, plenty of materials here to get started with and to work with. Um, you've even got lights, you've got objects such as home, you, you know, living room, so you can put chairs in and all sorts of different furniture and just start to style your home in the way that you sort of think that you'd want to style it. Um, and I highly advocate for using software like this because anyone who's built a home before or tried to do anything creative for that matter has probably realized that Things in your mind, once you put them into reality, they don't look the same as what you'd envisioned. And this is where something like this can really help to hone in on the design and feel of something that you want and really get it to look the way that you expected and not be disappointed when you've imagined something with your eyes closed and it looks horrible in real life. Me and Jan have gone through that a lot of times, even just picking wall colors. Um, which leads me to say this program, you can also put in RGB values of all different colored paints. So any paint company, you can just jump on their website, you can get their RGB value of their deluxe white or their brilliant green or whatever, whatever they want to call them. Put in the RGB values and it'll translate to the exact color how it looks in real life. So you can you can really go crazy and you can really get vivid a vivid depiction of what it's going to look like um, once you build it. So another thing this has, this has also vegetation. So all your landscaping needs, right? It's got materials for soils, sands, rocks, asphalt, grass, as you can see, all sorts of stuff. You've got trees, you just pick on one and voila, there's a tree in the sky somewhere. Voila. You know, a weeping willow, bang, there's a weeping willow. All modeled in high detail, all very, very realistic. Um, Twin Motion has a fantastic lighting system. It's got path tracing and uh, lumen, which basically bounces light off of objects the way that it would in real life. And as you can see, the shadowing is quite fantastic. In fact, in one of the one of those clips that I did in the virtual tour, you can probably see I left one clip stationary and then I orbited the sky to change, <laughs> to give you like a cool lighting effect and shadowing. And let me show you that right here. So if we go to our HDRI environment, which you can also change, you can get overcast to rainy, to snowy, to, to bright and sunny, all different kinds of skies, which have been taken in real life and then transcribed into this software. So it gives you a real life sky in the background. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So let's just do a quick um, rotation of the sky. And as you can see, all my shadowing in the environment, all the trees, the way the light hits the house, it's all changing in real time, um, which is exactly how you can actually figure out, you can actually give the location of your area. Um, for example here, you've got location, which I've got turned off at the moment, but when you do use it, you can actually put in, you can type in the area, the longitude, the latitude, say Ormoc Dolores, right in this spot, get it from Google Earth, and it'll actually predict the way that the sun travels in that area at a given time of year. So you can really, you know, figure out what your solar output or your solar generation is going to be. And that's why we angled the roof flat and we pitched it in the direction that we did so we can really maximize that, um, the, the capturing of all the solar that, that's available to us in that area. Um, 
So really, really powerful stuff, guys. Uh, you can animate everything. You can animate characters, vehicles, uh, animals, which in one of the clips you probably saw some birds flying around the sky as well. You can adjust and the, the, the speed of wind, like it, it just goes, it, it goes beyond crazy. And, and you make your videos in here, you take your captures in here. It's, it's just phenomenal. Um, and I think these days, people that are building their dream homes, their forever homes, it's really something that you can't go without. You know, it, you can really, you really don't want to make a mistake when you're spending this amount of money. And with inflation and everything going up lately, you don't want to be double spending, you don't want to be spending twice, you know, your hard earned money, and, and going, oh, I hate that, that looks awful. Um, you're better off just getting it right, doing it once. Like I said, this stuff is free, most of it, except for Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, the base model goes for like $89. As long as you've got a decent enough computer, even a laptop can run it. Um, it can really help to get a vibe for the area that you want to live in, you know, not necessarily go this this great detail, but it can give you a glimpse into, oh yeah, there's, there's this kind of feeling here, or you know, that there's a, you know, some sort of waste plant here that's disgusting, this doesn't look nice, there's too many trees and obstacles, my view is going to be blocked, blah, blah, blah. Um, well worth the $89. And then the rest, like I said, is free. So, guys, go ahead, have a play with it. And if you're not so sure, then ask us any questions that you want in the comments section below, and we'll be more than happy to help you out. So, we've got a lot of videos coming up. We went down to Pilton, to our old block of land where this whole off-grid dream started. Um, and we did a vlog there of the solar system and how we designed it in terms of the size and the specs of batteries, inverters, and how many solar panels you need to actually feel like you're not even, you know, off the grid. Pretty much you'll feel like you're tapped into the, <laughs> into the power lines. That's how, that's how much of a consistent output you can get if you spec your home right for the demand that you need. Um, so we're gonna talk about all of that. We've also got a Kris Kringle and a giveaway as, um, that we need to edit as well. So we, we've got a winner at the moment. And as soon as I get that video out, then make sure that you check out the video and claim your prize. I won't say who it is, but make sure you watch the video, that's next. I mean, guys, that's, that's pretty much all that we have for today. Um, if there's anything I missed, please make sure to sing out. Um, but until the next one, Thanks for supporting us. Thanks for being part of our journey. So please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We, we really <laughs> appreciate it, it means a lot. And the more of you that give us exposure or the more exposure that this channel gets, the more we can do things like this and do little giveaways and little tokens of our appreciation, things like that. So please, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell and like it, share it with your friends. And until the next one, this is the Castaway Couple. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.